I'm Justin. I wonder if my little desk fan is going to pick up. My pronouns are he and they. I'm Sadie. I work IT at a public library. I have a headache right now. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. And I'm Jay. I live in Boston now, and uh, my pronouns are he, him. Smoke, 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 me. Damn, son, where'd you find this? I am no longer living free and dying. Living free or dunting. <laughs> I, I have no idea what the Massachusetts logo is. It's probably something stupid. I mean, you can't say it on air. You know, nothing goes as hard as live free or die. Mm-hmm. Live free or die is pretty good. It's I pretty good. It it's pretty good. <laughs> Arthur, what do you think? Apparently, Don't Mess With Texas is like a, an environmental anti-litter campaign. It is. I guess where it came from. I listened to a, um, is it a maintenance phase or a you're wrong about episode that mentioned it. I think maintenance phase. It's from the 80s. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's episode 100. <laughs> Cool. I'm sorry. I started looking through our old, like the old titles of our, uh, all of our episodes. And I just Googled library punk to see what popped up. Mm-hmm. And oh no, <laughs> there's something from four months ago in our libraries on Reddit. That was just, does anyone here listen to library punk? Really? It's not a whole lot of comments, but there's like, here, I'll drop it in the chat. Weird. I stopped checking our libraries. But it's, it was really weird. Cause it's like pod or pod bean. Twitter, like all of the places I expect, and then just Reddit, which I have been reading a lot of lately. That's so weird. What's the premise of the podcast? It's just people saying, I don't know about them, but I'll go check it out. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's up, Redditors from four months ago? What's up? If you found if you found us through that Reddit thread, let us know. Yeah, I haven't looked at the Reddit, our libraries in a long time, because it all became just news reposts of uh book band stuff well it's it's way more active than it used to be maybe everyone from twitter went to reddit. maybe wasn't there some bullshit with reddit recently yeah they did the same thing with their api and a bunch of moderators went like shut down the forums the sub subreddits hmm. i don't know what ever happened with that pretty much nothing unfortunately yeah i figured I've been learning how to use R to pick up stuff from APIs, and now APIs all cost money, so I'm never going to use it. It's fun, though, isn't it? It is really fun. Uh, you just pull like a bunch of stuff and just go, uh, yeah, pull me uh, like 700,000 records. Yeah, can I get a fucking... Uh... Put them in a tibble, which is like a table, but you can't look at it. <laughs> Forbidden table. And you got to tell it to turn into a different thing that you can read. There's also like R Markdown, which is really fun, where it's like you can like write Markdown files that have R in them. And so it's almost like a um, kind of like a Jupyter notebook kind of thing where you can like do R stuff within a document. Then it's like interactive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like computes. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's uh, kind of obsessed with the uh, Quarto books. Yeah. Which have computational stuff. I thought you kind of already could do this with like existing Git pages, but yeah, you can put R in it and you can put mm-hmm. Jupyter in it and it'll compute in the document for you. Yeah, Jupyter Notebooks have it. There's like a org mode, like Emacs thing that does it. R does it. There's a, a few different. Nice link. It doesn't work, Sadie. Sadie, what the fuck? Shit. You're the tech person. <laughs> Sadie just posted the world's longest Google link, uh, but I bet it's because I have a link shortener add-in. Yeah, that was it. No, it didn't work for me either. Hold on. Okay. Brief reviews of books and products. Library Funk. This year. Oh, JLSC. They're cool people. I didn't know they were doing uh, reviews of podcasts. Do they like us? <laughs> they spelled Carrie's name wrong. Oh, no. Oops. When did this, this, this came, out, came out this year? That's so strange. Yeah, we haven't had carry on in like it's over a year. Yeah, like a year and a half. In the second episode, Intellectual Freedom No Steppy. This is like the first 10 episodes. Oh, God. How long? Was, no, there's episode 70. Okay, so it's. It, I'm so self conscious. Uh, they're active on their Twitter account. If there are editing cuts, the listener cannot tell. Oh, goodness. Are they complimenting your editing? Yeah, Justin makes good use of samples and music. Nice. Aww. Include show notes with citations, URLs, other pertinent information. Something like that would help their accessibility would be to make transcripts available. That takes so much time. So much time. That's why no one does it. And, I mean, you could do it on, like, you can use um, Sonics, which is what I did to do transcripts one time, but um, it still took me like 
seven or eight hours. Yeah, yeah. like we wouldn't, I would say like we probably won't ever do transcripts unless we get a Patreon where we could have money to hire someone to do it for us, you know? Basically. Like to get like a professional service to do it. Yeah. If someone wants to volunteer to do it. Then fuck it, do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, I don't know, like, for my master's thesis, I had to transcribe interviews. It takes so much fucking time, especially we cross talk because we're bad at podcasting. Uh, <laughs> and how the fuck do you transcribe cross talk? <laughs> I mean, you up, you have to have separate audio tracks is how. Yeah, but like, how do you notate that like in the transcript? Yeah, because I edit it and then I would have to re-upload it into Sonics, which is why the transcript version... And that, that one episode for the disability archives is actually not shortened the way that I normally edit because the shortening happens after I mix down the tracks mm. because otherwise it would cut the silences between the individual tracks. So it would just be, it would get everything wrong. References, metadata anarchy. My pride and glory. Yeah, this is more or less the way that I uh, sent that APA reference example to uh, for that one student yeah. who asked how to cite us. Did I never write Carrie's name in any of the episodes? <laughs> Is that why they don't know how to spell it? <laughs> I'm just thinking about that now. And I'm like, how did... How yeah, did I don't happen? think we ever put like our names like in anything at all. It, we it just say them. in the episode descriptions. Yeah, no, weird. they weren't. I don't think so. Well, thank you, Lizzie Walker. My name is Jay, and it's spelled J-A-Y for posterity's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Justin with a J, not Dustin. <laughs> you don't you don't meet that many Dustins around here. But I also don't meet any Justins. It's nice to be in a Justin free area. I don't like other people having my name. All right. I've got a news item before we do uh, what's essentially a bonus episode because we don't have a, an agenda except memories. We're going down memory lane. Everyone's mad all the time. So, uh, yes. yeah. So finally, Blue Sky is like picking up enough. I'm following enough people that I'm I'm getting like breaking discourse about stuff. And speaking of R, actually, I'm going to link to a Tech Third article just because it was the easiest one. Obviously, it's it's a position on this, which I more or less agree with. There was a AI program that was trained on authors' books called. Shakespeare, and it's spelled S H A X P I R. Good name. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm back and forth on using a Kai in the middle of a URL, like archive.org and archive.org, because then, like, verbally you can't distinguish them. So you have to, like, write it out and be like, no, this is the A R X I V one, not the A R C H I V one. How very Derrida of you. Uh, yeah. That's what I was thinking about. I mentioned in a in a, in a chat the 2005 movie White Noise, and someone thought I was talking about the postmodern novel. I'm like, that's very flattering that you think that that was what no, I was talking about. No, it's a horror about. movie, right? Where like dead people's like voices and conversations <laughs> linger after death because of something. Like, yeah, underneath. they come through the TV white yeah, noise I, static. I remember that movie. Yeah, I, that was one of the that was in my movie watching phase, or that was how I got out of the house in high school. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the dry handy in the move in the in the movies. <laughs> the uh, say, phase of my life. That one. <laughs> I don't remember, but I know I saw it in the theater. If there's a movie that came out between 2004 and 2006, I probably saw it. Just saw fucking everything. But anyway, this Shakespeare project uses, it's been around for a few years apparently, but it got picked up on, I believe, Twitter. It's built on top of something called Prosecraft. And Prosecraft is a corpus of books that have been scanned, books that are in copyright and are used to pull out statistics. So basic digital humanities stuff. Yeah. Basic digital humanities stuff, which is what makes this a little bit like, hmm. Um, also because it's already been around. Yeah. This is literally just shit you can do in Python. This is, yeah, yeah. this is stuff you would do in R or Python or yeah. anything else. And, and the whole thing has been people getting quite mad that their book is analyzed in this tool. It's not available in full text. It's that your book is available to be like how much passive voice, how many non L Y adverbs, the things that we've been doing in hottie trust for like a decade. Yeah. And the one thing that kind of is, I don't think has ever come to head. So clear, like scanning books and using them is clearly fair use. Like that's, yeah, more or less my position from the Google case is like this is transformative use, transformative use is fair use. But the question is, like, how do you get access to these books? And obviously he had to use like a bunch of pirated versions, right? 
Yeah. And the question is, if you if you initially access something, is that a violation of copyright mm. rather than scanning it yourself? Is it the manner in how you access it a, an issue? That is a good question. Yeah, I'm not really sure. It would definitely have an issue in terms of like DMCA, like the person hosting it, but... And if you were downloading, I mean, that's always the thing whenever they get people on like music piracy stuff back in the day, it was always the fact that they were also sharing it. Yeah. So if you're only leeching a download and you're not sharing it back out, um, you know, I don't think you would normally get caught. Right. It depends. I mean, I think some people have definitely gotten caught that way with like music stuff. But anyway, he didn't do his own scans. It's not clear how he got access to a lot of the books. Uh, he, he gave a pretty long, long statement about when it happened. So it was in 20, uh, 2017 when it launched mm-hmm. and started showing it off at conferences and people liked it and has continued kind of using it. And then he talks about something I'm interested in, which is AI like in quotes, becoming a thing. And that's caused a lot of like a political backlash, which is like sensible, right? But it's also like this shit isn't AI, right? It's it's not, I don't think this is even a large language model. I think this is just like statistical analysis. Yeah, this is like sentiment analysis and shit, right? I think so. I think Shakespeare was doing something a little more on top of that. And it was like, it was spitting out some writing. Yeah. But it wasn't spitting out the work that had been scanned. Yeah. I like the point that this article makes that like people latching onto the co- to the copyright argument as a way to combat this is not the right tactic. Um, and Cause we've been saying that since like day one, like that is not the route we want to go. We don't want stricter intellectual property laws. And like these kinds of tools are really important for research. The digital humanities has been doing this shit for decades, literal decades. Like this is literally what digital humanists do all of the time, right? Like it's important that we be able to do this with works that are in copyright. And this article is correct. You don't need quote consent from an author or a publisher in order to do this. And I think that that's a really dangerous way to use the word consent Mm -hmm. when Mm -hmm. talking about like research and like creative works and transformative works and shit. Like if you were like that, that stop that shit. Like that actually makes me really mad when people frame it that way. You are not being violated by people doing research or creative analysis or whatever. This is all fine. Now, what I will say is, again, this isn't necessarily like AI in the way that we're thinking of, but like, when is it important, even when the like technology is agreeable? Like, you know, I, I think this is a cool tool and like people should be able to do this, but when do like, cause the Luddites weren't just like, they weren't anti-tech. It was this technology is going to be taking our jobs and hurting our livelihood so we rebel against the tech, not because tech bad, but because the people will use the tech to exploit us. So when do we, even if it's a cool tool or agree with how like its potential use is like, oh, we could use this for liberatory or revolutionary or just cool research. Like we could use this in a good way, but when do we go? No, because of the fact that this tool could be used to exploit. When do we say we just need to smash the looms? regardless right that's where i'm kind of conflicted right now of like this is a cool tool and i think people are being reactionary in how they are treating the relationship between intellectual property and this kind of tool but also when do we just smash the looms yeah there's a difference between like the copyright issues in terms of uh, like you have to have a license to do ai work would be like a really bad Mm -hmm position to take because that's going to entrench all of the largest AI businesses. So that's going to entrench Meta, Google, Microsoft, and they're going to be the only ones allowed to do any of this stuff. And also it's going to add a layer to copyright law that doesn't currently exist, which is like, you know, there's fair use. Like copyright doesn't extend over fair use. We need fair use. Yeah. Copyright's bad, people. It's bad. Like stop (laughs) bootlicking for intellectual property laws. Do you want to suck Bob Iger's dick? Stop sucking Bob Iger's dick. There's better dick to suck, I promise. It's that meme, the leftism leaving people's bodies when you talk about intellectual property. Yes. (laughs) It frustrates me so much. I hate it. Arthur, what do you think? 
Arthur got up on the table. Arthur, do you want to say hi to everyone listening to episode 100 of the podcast by rubbing up against the microphone, buddy? Yeah. Arthur? Justin, if Arthur says hello by rubbing up against the microphone, you better not edit it out. Yeah. Hi, buddy. <laughs> want to rub up against the microphone? He's, he's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. He'll do it. He says hi when I'm like talking to someone on the phone or on the computer. Maybe your tone of voice is different. And that's why he's like, oh, I don't have to rub it right now. Yeah. He's rubbing up against my beer, my, my cruising poster. I haven't hung up yet. Just... R.I.P. William Friedkin, by the way. The baseball player? Yes. Episode 100, baby. <laughs> He doesn't give a whole lot of uh, explanation of how he got access to a lot of the books, but it was probably like LibGen or something or something he's able to scrape. So, yeah, I don't think there's ever been a case where the means by which you get access to something, because this is also in the um, in the FSCI, um, the Force 11 Scholar Communications Institute. I just took a couple classes with them and part of the corpus they're working on is the Carl Malamud database, which is hosted in India, I think. And that has been the target of copyright takedown notices, I guess. But he's doing the same thing. He's building a corpus of like all scholarly articles and then using it for data analysis. Uh, So I don't know. People are totally fine using it for all kinds of different stuff, but they're using it for climate change information. They're trying to figure out how to extract data from PDFs, which is obviously, uh, yeah, really, really hard to do. Because PDFs are images, not text files. So they are not, they're not good. It was weird that this, uh, there was a huge uh, backlash to buy a bunch of authors. And then it continued when people were kind of like explaining like why this was fair use. And uh, I saw some really like angry responses to that. And I was like, yeah, but wrong. <laughs> so fair use exists even for uses we don't like. Yeah. More or less. That is one area where that is really important that that be true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. And also, I mean, it's certain things you just don't put out there if you don't want them. Yeah. yeah. Like people can criticize your work. Accessible. Yeah. You know? Where was it that I was reading something about tangentially related? I think it was movies where they would make it so film critics couldn't see, like, see the films ahead of time so they couldn't write reviews for them until release day but then they would do like screenings with like a bunch of influencers and stuff and tell them to feel free to tweet any of their positive thoughts basically seeing the field and it feels like that's what a lot of people think is how it should work yeah especially like i'm going to become the joker you wrote a story and you decided to publish it. Like it's out there. You don't have, you, you no longer have control, total control over it. So like, yeah. Yeah. There are definitely like different situations where that's true. I, I definitely feel weird about when people are like, don't reblog stuff on social media sites. Cause I'm like, well, that's a social aspect. You have like rules about how you conduct yourselves on different social media sites. But like the act of publishing and critique has been around for a long time. And it's like, you know, those mores have already kind of been worked out, which is like it's out there. Anyone can say whatever they want about it. And that's important. Yeah. So that was uh, the only news that I put in there because I take all the other bad news and I just throw it into a document now and go, yeah, we'll just do an episode on that. So I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six stories sitting in a document now. Yay. Uh, Yeah. Honestly, not a lot on the Mutter Museum. So that episode's still like sitting around waiting. I guess they're just working on that all summer and maybe they'll make some announcements in the fall. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I've still got the Mutter drop. So when am I going to when am I going to do the episode? Rockstein's bad now, though. Canceled. They were always bad. <laughs> They're canceled, which is actually I like Rammstein a lot. I used to listen to Rammstein like in the morning, like on my way to like German class on days I had tests. Mm-hmm. That and I'm trying to annoy about him, you know. Uh, I guess you can listen to Oomph unless they did something bad too. Or D. Totenhosen. That was the news. Episode 100. What was your favorite episode we did? It's not in the notes, but see, we've been doing this two and a half years now. Like ever? Yeah. It's wild to me. Just one week at a time. Honestly, like the first like 40 episodes, I have a hard time remembering what we covered because I don't have them on my uh, on my desktop. So I have to like scroll through our website to get to them. I scrolled back. Let's do I still have it up. I scrolled back to episode 50, just looking through like the titles on Podbean. And it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We did talk to that person. Oh, yeah. We did talk about that subject. I don't know. I I have a hard time like going back and listening to uh, our early episodes. I mean, I have very 
fond memories of like I mean, like, I don't know, we've had really cool guests on, and like, sometimes we'll get guests on, and I'm like, how the fuck <laughs> did we get this person on? Or like, I remember like, our Vanguard, we didn't ask them to be on, they asked to be on. I was like, what the, <laughs> like, that was really cool. Um, and now I'm like really good friends with with them, right? Like, that's weird. Like, I have made friends through this, like, podcast. Like, I'm really close with some people now because of like, stupid episodes that we've done, <laughs> right? <laughs> Podcasting is for making friends. It's not actually about podcasting is for making friends. Exactly. Episodes that I really liked just because of like subject matter. I thought the human trash dump episode, like I still think about that a lot with like the, the person who like did all that stuff with like made like a little like human trash dump, like internet archive thing and like did stuff with Tumblr and like the fragmented body and like protest and all that. Like I thought that performance art online. Yeah. Like I just thought that was really cool and I still think about it a lot. And I want to clarify, if we mentioned that we really like a, an episode with a guest on it, we're not saying that if you aren't that guest that we like you less or that we liked having you on less. This is not a judgment of the guests. I have a spreadsheet if you want to know how much I like you. Yeah. Because yeah. I know, because like, we're like, I'm like friends with people now <laughs> because who are guests. I'm like very like, there, there are a couple of people who I like talk to like every single day now because of this podcast, like people I'm extremely close to. That episode with... Callan was way earlier than I thought. You have <laughs> Callan back on. That's actually something I wanted to think about was what's changed over the, the course of this podcast is obviously Twitter's died. I have a new job since we started. Yeah. So do I. I still don't, even though I have uh, been in the waiting for a new job the whole time. But hopefully next month I'll move into my new job or some. I don't know when. I don't. I have no idea. Well, we changed hosts. That was a change. Yeah. We got a new theme song. We did. We got new. Shouts. Oh, yeah. Shouts out to Audrey. Yeah. From Radio Free Tote Bag. Um, she has a um, a GoFundMe right now. There was like a car thing that, that happened. So we should put that in the notes so that people can go give her money. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about doing that. Mm-hmm. Filthiest cock gobbling slut. Yes. If you liked Audrey, uh, she did our banger theme song and so you should go give her money give throw money at radio free tote bag you know mm-hmm. all of that yeah we don't want your filthy money go give it to go give it to radio free tote bag don't get go give it to audrey go give it you know to some strike funds all that but yeah a lot of people who made twitter a lot of fun jumped pretty early and so it's just been sort of a a, a slow decline on twitter of like most of my favorite library people left as soon as Elon bought the platform. And then it's slowly been a drop off. And then after the whole uh, rate limiting thing, like everyone just left. So I actually have been kind of tracking like how many people are leaving. So every time our follower count goes below 420, I follow more people to get it back up to 420. And it keeps going down. I have to keep following more accounts to get it back up. Because people are just dropping off the site that fast. Yeah, I'm only on because like podcast shit. Like, yeah, this, it's literally just for stuff. DMs and yeah, that's about it. You know, keeping up with other podcasts I follow and like with my side, my other podcasts and stuff. That's a like good. I thought you were gonna say your side bit, <laughs> your side piece, your side piece. No, I talk to them elsewhere. <laughs> Looking at like all the old cover art that I used to use, like Sonic on the on that one Soviet building, that one Brutalist building. Oh, when we had Agab on for the Agab episode, I've got I've got Kermit Kermit Gulag. I think the funniest <laughs> thing that's ever happened on this podcast is Sadie going, "He's got to go fast." <laughs> <laughs> like, I still remember that. <laughs> That was one of my finer moments in life. That's that's how Horror Vanguard found out about us. Yeah, was the Agab episode, I think. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So what what episode? What episode is like our top episode by like downloads or what other metrics? It's probably Internet Archive, right? We don't have super because like the metrics on Podbean are kind of wonky, um, which is good because it's not doing super surveillance on everybody. And I don't use like Google Analytics or anything. Fuck Google Analytics, honestly. Yeah, it's definitely, it's probably the Internet Archive episode got the most traction. But I mean, like, every episode's been slowly creeping up. Like, Homosaurus did really good. Downloads all time. Yeah, you can't even sort by downloads. Oh, jeez. 
But yeah, Internet Archive has, a, has over 900. But every other, like, there, we have tons of other ones that have like 700, 800. So they all get about roughly the, the same download. Moms for Liberty has over 800. So it's just steadily creeping up, which is interesting considering, again, how, how hamstrung we are by losing a lot of reach on Twitter. We're almost at the point of getting more engagement on Blue Sky. <laughs> Oh. Even though we only have 110 followers. I still need to find a whole bunch of people. Well, you don't shit post as much on the Twitter account anymore. I do replies. Yeah, I used to shit post so much. Well, I get mad the moment I'm on Twitter because like all the ads are just like gold scams or whatever. And it's it's just becoming cable news. It's like I can't I can't be on here for more than like five minutes. The in shitification of social media. We really need to do an episode on enchitification because it it combines with this this other thing where I think is really relevant for AI discussions, which is like instead of using copyright law to protect artists, we need to focus on contract law, and that's kind of like Cory Doctorow's case in, in that latest book. But the thing is, I haven't gotten through reading that book, and so that's why I have been putting off doing an episode on choke point capitalism, enchitification, and choke points. Yeah, that was it. So different choke points of Basically, that was what I was talking about earlier with creating these choke points for if you if you get a functional monopoly, one of the ways to do that is to get regulated by the government. And that's why all these companies are begging to be regulated, because that will just create the rules that only they can follow and that will cement them in power. There was actually there's a good episode of Trash Future recently at, that was um, I think it was uh, Patrick Wyman came on and was talking about how like people just sort of in different political times, just kind of jump in and park on political power. And you can use that analysis for lots of things, including like monopolies, um, not just state formation or like, you know, how do people take power after the Romans fell or whatever? And it's like, well, someone just kind of parked on a, a plot of land and was like, I, I control this now through various institutions that either already exist or I am creating through violence. Yeah, sort of just ways of parking and uh, a space for yourself. So I really want to talk about that because it's going to be relevant for AI, but there's really just, um, I don't know how to go about it. And honestly... We should do a book club episode on it. A book club episode? Yeah, we could. We haven't done a book club episode where we've all read a book. Yeah, I've been meaning to read Choke Point Capitalism. And I'm going to have more free time. I mean, I already have more free time. And then starting September 1st, I'm going to have... Even more free time. Hooray. Yay. Only good news. <laughs> Only good news. <laughs> but, oh. I'm <laughs> That's from a bowling clip. Oh Jesus. I'm scrolling through the pod bean and episode eighty, the mom's for liberty one. And it's like scrolling through the notes, scrolling, 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 scrolling through the notes. And then I remember I just exactly how like whack deep you went, Justin, into this and how (laughs) how you use that like always sunny thing with the like red yarn and like (laughs) you were just pointing. I'm just like, I still think about that. I still think about that episode a lot, just like going deeper and deeper and it getting wilder and wilder, how interconnected so much of this political shit is. And just, yeah, so I get totally see why the notes are nine million years long, but it still just kind of cracked me (laughs) up because that's the number one thing I remember from that episode is just like the endless deluge of links and stuff that were as you are putting the notes together for that one. It was a. A good time in a bad way, if that makes sense. Yeah, I was I was mapping out a lot of names because I was trying to figure out how these organizations were connected and to see like, OK, who are these people? So there's like a section of the notes where I just had to put in parentheses like what they do. And it was like a uh, homeschool activist, TPUSA, all right, grifter, Texas Republican representative, uh, duck dynasty guy's wife, uh, Gusano grifter, <laughs> Trump cabinet member, border security grifter. Oh, yeah. Motivational speaker who got arm bit off by a shark. That was the one I still <laughs> cannot figure out. What her deal is. <laughs> our shark, our shark comrades. Because she's not the swimmer. She's a surfer. She's not the swimmer who is always anti-trans. I think it's a surfer mm-hmm. who's probably anti-trans. Yeah, she she wrote a, a very God saved me by having a shark bite off my arm sort of memoir, if I remember correctly. Yeah. 
Yeah, doing that kind of stuff is not very hard for me to throw into notes and do research, but it's always been hard, like a lot longer to actually write. That's why I don't do much writing anymore, because I'm like, I could put it on the podcast or I could just like put it out in these bullet points. And it's like, that's everything I want to say is in these bullet points. I have been thinking about podcasting in terms of like as a format. I still think it's like one of the best ways to get ideas out there quickly. But and I, I've definitely gone more with. I think I've been talking to a couple of people in the Skullcom shit talk discord about like publishing. Like, do you bother publishing through a journal or are we just going to start throwing stuff on humanities commons? And like, it's published now. Do we, do we even need to put these things in journals because like they're going to be out of date by the time, or there's no reason to write this up formally. And we just need to get the ideas out there. And Twitter's not a good means of information dissemination. And neither is Blue Sky. Like microblogging really is not, we, we've used it and we've made threads and stuff. And we've made it work, but it's really not like a great way of putting information in one place and finding it later. So using, you know, I mean, that's what blogs are really good at. And it's, uh, you know, return with a with a with a with a markdown V. I don't know. I don't know any cool markdown stuff. I just had to remember how to put code in markdown the other day because I'm I'm writing a instructional log for how to teach the terminal. And I was like, I'll put it in markdown. It'll look cool and it'll impress the instructors. I'll get a good grade in the carpentries. <laughs> but yeah, we've got a spinoff podcast now. Oh me. Yeah, yeah. Jay, how's that going? Yeah. It's going pretty good. We've got six episodes. Yeah, mine's up next. Yeah, yours is up next week. Um, I have to edit edit that this weekend. We're going to pivot away from doing movies for a bit. Just we're, you know, looking into like quote professional criticism is not anything to do with the strike, but anything that might be like a watch along or like promotion. It's like are are we promoting work from a struck studio, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so for example, like we have some episodes coming out uh about the Hannibal show. Um, we need to talk about like, are we still going to release those right now? Which I would very much like to for lots of reasons, but we're going to try to in, going forward until the strike is over, focus more on books and art and culture um, stuff like that. And yeah, that's been going really good. I learned how to edit for that one. Um, I don't know if I'm very good at it. I'm still figuring shit out. Yeah. It's, it's been, it's been really cool. You know, sometimes I just need an outlet to be a, a pervert. <laughs> And that podcast has been a good outlet for oh, being y'all. pervy but smart about it. You know? Yeah, it's kind of the thing is podcasting tools haven't changed a huge amount. Uh, I think I don't know if Adobe's going to like follow through with this, but they're making some tools that actually could be game changers. But I have no idea if they're ever going to make it out of beta. Yeah. Um, or if they're just going to like give up on it because, you know, most podcasts run on a shoestring budget. I guess there must be like a million and one corporate podcasts that would shell out money. And I guess that that makes money. But like, I, I guess the other other stuff too is like pretty expensive. Like Zencaster is cheap enough that, I mean, we could do this over Zoom. Like I have a, a university Zoom, we could do it, but like- I know people who do it over Discord and you just, yeah. each person records locally on, on their end, right? Yeah. Or over Skype, et cetera. There are tons of things that we pay for just to, make it simpler there's also stuff that's way more expensive like i was trying to think about like because zencasters like made some changes i wasn't too happy with and i thought about changing the um, the way we record but everything else is way more expensive and has way fewer like functions yeah but since i have uh access to adobe through work it's like oh if they release like podcasting software we are set <laughs> that's like free for me <laughs> benefit of working at a university is a lot of universities will give you adobe not all of them but even at the tiny little private one i worked at we got adobe and that was like kind of the best perk definitely wasn't the retirement arthur are you sitting on the radiator buddy in front of the air conditioner arthur that can't be comfortable do you have enough room in your new place for uh coop and arthur to like lounge are they figuring out their new yeah coop's in here with me there oh okay i, did. I thought that was a yeah i couldn't tell because it's the same color as the wall yeah Arthur is. Yeah, that's not too bad. He's on the radiator. I mean, Arthur can like explore the whole apartment, right? Yeah. I, yeah. You could set up um, like little doggy doors on your fridge and everything or like your heater and stuff. I just watched Ace Ventura recently. I don't recommend it. Um, <laughs> no. It's way worse than you remember. <laughs> Did not age well. Yeah, I watched it with someone who was trans and it was their idea to watch it. And I was like, okay, but we both know that there's like really bad scenes in this, right? And then um, there are way more than you remember. (laughs) 
because it just keeps going. And you're like, oh, God, I thought I was like, gonna, oh, like, all right, well, that was bad, but we're through it now. And then it happens again. And you're like, OK, well, we're through it now. And then it happens again. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I forgot that movie set in Florida. It's like, oh, this is Florida culture. Of course it is. How, how accurate is the Florida representation? I mean, Dan Marino being everywhere, I would say being on TV a lot. Um, that was genuinely funny <laughs> to have Dan Marino in that movie and just being himself doing awkward commercials. That was genuinely a good bit. Having re- having watched Buffy for the first time and also watching 90s comedy, I'm like, wow, Ace Ventura reminds me of Xander a lot. Oh, uh, God. I was, <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> so I was like, I feel like I'm watching like the origin story of Joss Whedon. That explains a lot. I um, was, was just trying to do Ace Ventura. <laughs> that explains so much. I think it's a good theory. Joss Whedon, do not interact. Yeah, <laughs> do not interact if... It's just that list with Gre- of uh, Greg Universe and like a million <laughs> properties on top of it. <laughs> I need to do more podcast art. I'll put that in there. No one will be able to read that. Never mind. Oh, right. I stopped earlier because I forgot. I lost my train of thought, but I wanted to bring up George Bataille. Oh, yeah. That was why I haven't read the Cory Doctorow book, because actually what I've been thinking about is George Bataille and uh, deciding to like read a bunch of his stuff. So maybe I'm just going to be like, get really into Bataille for, for like the rest of the year. I've been wanting to read Bataille too, because of story of the eye. Yeah. I've been wanting to read that. I don't know who this is. So he's the French dude weirdo. that Hellraiser is, is based off of uh, <laughs> a little bit. Can I give him a little bit more context? It's the easiest way to explain it. Yeah. He wrote this um, cool, wrote a lot, weird, erotic, philosophical story called story of the eye. Forget what that is in French. Um, but um i know what i'm doing in my next yeah. wikipedia dive he probably did other things but that's what i know him from is story of the eye because i'm a pervert and that's all i know. there were two good episodes on acid horizon that came out with someone who's been translating batai and wrote nice. um one of those uh short history the short biographies in that in that one series I'll link to those episodes because they're really good. But they were talking about uh, Bataille in the context of sustainability and how mm. he's very much about excess. He's, he's a contradictory thinker. So he thinks about both rules and taboos and then the, the breaking of those things. And people tend to focus on the more interesting, sexy part of like breaking taboos about torture and sex and limit experiences uh, where you become other than yourself. So you're in a crowd of people, you lose yourself, you're having sex, and there's a moment you lose yourself. And he's like really interested in this Hell moment yeah. where you lose your, where you are separate from the universe. And he's like searching for those moments where you are one with the universe and there is no anthropocentric view of yourself. Agreed. And he's like, obviously, that's impossible to maintain, but we should have like moments where we allow ourselves to to do those things. We go swim in the ocean because we want to feel overwhelmed by something, right? Oh, shit, I should read Bataille. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. This sounds like right up your alley. That's all I, I agree with this already. I'm like, yeah, duh. There's a whole reason I went to New Zealand because I wanted to be overwhelmed. Yeah. That was why I sent it to Jay because I was like, you could do something on Tender Subject about Bataille because obviously like the... The whole, his interpretations of Marquis de Sade and stuff. Uh, the, the thing I find very funny about him is he's like, he doesn't read very deeply. Um, he's like a very interesting thinker, but he's not like super well read in everything. So he'll, he'll like start writing about like anthropology and then some anthropologists will be like, you're not up to date. And then he'll just like go back to his study and be like, ah, oh, I got to redo this. But then he'll also like reference novels that he just happened to read and he'll like get really hung up on like a novel he really liked and keep citing it for like the next 10 years. This guy's super relatable. Hoops among us, you know, like, like people who keep referencing the same movies in their teaching career for like 20 years, referencing Blade Runner for 30 years. Fight Club. I feel like that's what Fight Club is, is or it ha- is becoming. Yeah, TV shows that are older than your students, um, that kind of thing. It's very funny. So, yeah, this uh, he seems super relatable. So I, I really am thinking, like, you know, this could be my Bataille fall. I also want to read Badu because he wrote about love and revolution a lot. And I'm like, yeah, I'm in that mood right now. The thing that might not make, because Bataille is, like, obsessed with this picture of torture. And that's, uh, like, changed his whole life. Yeah, it's, it's like a... <laughs> I, 
said you won't want to look this up, but it's like uh, a type of torture that was like like death by a thousand cuts or whatever. And he has a photo of one of the last times it was ever used. Ooh. And uh, he would like keep it on his wall and like look and like stare at it. And he was he was like obsessed with this photo as a limit experience. Is it which 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 picture? It's uh the. I would like to see it. The Ling Chi, is that it? Oh, yeah. L-I-N-G-C-H-I. And then, no, I don't see the, the exact photo. There's one, but this is a different. Oh, no, this might be it. Yeah, it's on the Wikipedia. But it's a, yeah, 1905 photo. Uh, that's not going to be the episode art. Oh, nice. <laughs> but yeah, it's a it's a form of torture and, uh, and execution. Damn. So you can see the Hellraiser connection if you see that photo. Yeah. I think some of the Hellraiser monsters are actually based off of it. So that's how, if you if you want to know how gory the photo is, that's how gory. I wanted to bring up a tie on this episode because I, I think every podcast is going to start with tie posting. And I wanted to get in before everyone else does. Set the trend. Because everyone, all the cool podcasts are probably going to listen to Acid Horizon. They're all going to want to talk about Bataille. And I want to get in first before like Agab does it. Yeah, let's do a Bataille book club. Just read the short story about pissing pissing and butts hell yeah yeah i think that's that's what the eye story is about and there's a lot of things in the story of the eye honey there's a bunch of there's a bunch of essays he wrote that i want to get my hands on so i was taking a bunch of notes while i was listening to the podcast but it's gosh that podcast is so dense it's so dense and even their guest was like okay you said a lot of words right there let me try and unpack let's Let's talk about the solar anus. Let's do that. Yeah, one. the solar anus. What podcast? I feel a little lost. <laughs> Acid, Acid Horizon. Horizon. Okay. It's, it's one of the spooky left podcasts. It's a tough one to get into. Yeah, they're they're really dense. Sometimes it's scripted. I can't really listen to scripted podcasts because I need to. I, I can't pay attention. I need to like listen to people having a conversation. And so if it's like someone reading off something, I'm like, I cannot, I can't do it. And they all talk in paragraphs, which is also, I think, the main thing that's like difficult when you have ADD. It's like, I don't remember how the sentence started. Yeah. So story of the eye, increasingly bizarre sexual perversions of a pair of teenage lovers, including an early depiction of Omorashi fetishism in Western literature. It is narrated by the young man looking back on his ex Histoire de l'Oual. Yeah, that was one other thing I wanted to, to mention. It's just like on the state of podcasting, since it hasn't changed much, although there are, I've heard like a million corporate podcasts, but like I'm trying to think about how my listening has changed. Because mm-hmm. I've always said that this, I was always trying to model us off Trash Future. So I still listen to them and like some of the related podcasts, but there's still a ton of others where, and we've got our own style by now, but at the beginning it was like, that gave me some structure. I, the po- the podcasts I listen to now are mainly, it's like my friends podcasts because of this show. Yeah. Like, it's like people we've had on. It's a lot or of Or like adjacent. Now. Cause it's like, oh, cause these are my friends. And it, I, it's like, maybe it's a little parasocial of me, but it's like, oh, I get to listen to my friends talk about something. It's like, I know these people. You know, I mean, sometimes I'm not like super close. Friends. I think of your friends is just social. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, one it, of those words I want to put on the shelf and be like, let's not use this word for like a year or so. I'm getting a little tired of the word parasocial. <laughs> yeah, because I am. I am friends with, with some of these people. I like very close friends. Not all of them, but some of them. But yeah, it's like, I don't know. I mainly listen to podcasts where it's like I've either been on their podcast or they've been on this one or on Tinder Subject and I'm friends with them. There's some that. It's weird to think like which ones have died off in terms of like they're just over. Like some like what my my major comfort podcast change hosts, like all the all the hosts changed. And I'm like, I don't like it anymore. <laughs> I was really bummed about it. So that and that was my one like non-political, non it was just like I would put it on for background noise because it was like funny. And it still is that, but it's like it's not I'm not enjoying it anymore. It's not the same. It's just not the same. And then I just see new ones pop up and I'm always interested to see how people do their their first few episodes and like, you know, release like a bunch in a row and then they go tour on like their friends' podcasts and they announce it and stuff. So like Cargo Cult is one I've I've taken some interest in and see like how they're gonna build up. Um so they do like a tech podcast. So that's kind of along the trash future lines where they're talking about, you know, like venture capital stuff and tech stuff and like Neom's the lot the line city in Saudi Arabia and all that weird stuff that some people are really into. Um and I'll listen to it, but it's not like my main thing. But a lot of these are 
podcasts that are tangentially related to each other, just sort of like by degrees of separation. So like one person has been on them or someone we know has recommended it. So it was like this uh, Christian leftist podcast that uh, Frank retweeted. And I just went through the Magnificast. Yeah, because they, they've been on Horror Vanguard as well. Mm-hmm. And that's they've been around forever. Yeah. Yeah. No, so the past year, my commute has included an hour, like a three and a half mile walk in the morning and in the afternoon. So I've been walking like 10 plus miles a day for Jesus. four days a week for like a year. Um, and so I've listened to all of Horror Vanguard. <laughs> <laughs> every single one um i listened to a good chunk of pod damn america i'm starting to make my way through left page and hear me media yeah I-, I listened to a lot of why you mad there's some i find hard to get into after they've already started for a long time it's like do i go back to before covid yeah. because like everyone's podcast kind of had a change format so they had like a bunch of people had to learn how to use zoom and were really bad at it which is really funny. Some of the podcasts I was listening to, I was like, oh, wow. I thought I thought you guys would like be good with technology and you are all terrible at it, uh, which is really charming in a way. I don't know. Sadie, what are you listening to? I don't really listen to podcasts. <laughs> Every <laughs> podcast has to have the one person who doesn't listen to podcasts. It's, they're really hard for my ADD. Like, I have to be in a very specific situation to be able to really like really take in a podcast it doesn't stop me from aspiring to listen to podcasts i have like on my spotify playlist is like a giant list of like ep- different episodes of stuff that i i want to listen to but like if i need to concentrate i need background music and if i don't need to concentrate then i can't listen to a podcast because i won't actually like absorb any of it i listened to welcome to night Vale a lot when it first came out like you know 15 years ago or what, however long it was. But that was when I was like Jay walking to work. So I would, li- I had perfect amount of time to listen to one episode of Welcome to Night Vale on my walk to and from work. So, and I don't commute. I have like a 10 minute commute. I've tried podcasts when I did commute. It didn't really work very well for me. So yeah, I, uh, I, I write down tons of suggestions from you guys and like, especially like our guests because I don't think we've ever, like, my favorite part of being on this podcast is just getting to talk to the wide array of people. And like you said, Jay, sometimes it's like, how the fuck do we get this person on here? Like, like you remember my reaction when, Jay, your friend, when I realized your friend was married to TK Fisher. And I just, like, lost my <laughs> mind for a second. But, like, yeah. so, like, like we have all of these awesome guests who do really cool shit. And I'm always like wanting to like, listen to their stuff. And I just, I just can't do podcasts. I don't even <laughs> listen to our own half of the time. But sometimes I do, especially when I'm working and then I'm just like, not actually working. I'm just sitting there like internally cackling at our bullshit. Uh, and hoping nobody calls me out on the fact that I'm not actually doing anything on in teams. I'm just opening and closing it to look like I am. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a very st- sad state to be in. I I always like listen back, and part of that is um, because this helps me with my voice. I, I haven't done I I did when I first started transitioning. I did like six months of speech therapy, and then my speech therapist was like, "You have graduated speech therapy," but also I'm a fruit, and so like my voice tends to like get and it's like upper register, which is fine, but I don't always have it resonating where I want it to, nor is my intonation or my timbre or my phrasing maybe where I want it to be, especially when I get really excited or something. And so listening to that, the podcast, it's like, okay, here's what I need to work on. Yeah. It was really funny when um, I was like, I really need to get like an actual microphone. Ash from Horror Vanguard was like, you need to get the same mic that I have because you cackle. <laughs> And so do I. <laughs> and this microphone can handle cackling. <laughs> um, so it's like, you know, it's it's been a weird like gender experience for me to like hear my voice preserved and recorded. I don't think my voice has changed much. I think my voice is probably done changing. But like if I want it to sound different or, or something, because um, that's like my main source of dysphoria at this point in my transition is my voice. But yeah, so it's like I both hate listening back to episodes because I'm like, ugh, I sound like shit. But also, it's I don't know, it's nice to like be able to hear this is what I sound like. Maybe I should change this or I need to pay more attention to this. 
whatever. Alas, I, I, I am not. I, I will never be a person who has like a sexy podcast voice. I do not think. <laughs> I think you sound like the guy from uh, If Books Could Kill. Whenever I'm listening to that podcast, I'm like, this which like one? Jay. Michael Hobbs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he's also on maintenance phase and used to be on um, You're Wrong About. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he's also gay. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I just have gay voice, okay? Because <laughs> mm-hmm. he's also got he's also kind of higher pitched and sounds very fruity. That's actually very reassuring. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, because every time I'm listening to it, I'm just like, wow, this guy's voice is so similar to Jay's. Like, it's really like uncanny. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you get to listen to us twice: once when we record and once to put it all actually together. Yeah, I have. That's that's kind of why I haven't re-listened to episodes recently to like go back and re-listen to like old favorites. Uh, is because after I'm done editing them, I'm like, I've listened enough. And then I just throw it out there and don't like re-listen after all the edits. Yeah, neither do I for Tinder subject. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes, um, actually with with a recent episode, I had to go back and do a little touch-up after I published it. Because our guest was like, wow, I sounded bad. I'm like, oh, let me go fix your audio a little bit then. Um, it only took a minute, but I just had to change a little setting and, and do something. So, yeah. Yeah, because of the the changes in Zencaster, I've also had to learn new editing tricks even recently where it's just like, oh, yeah, I've got to learn how to do this because Zencaster doesn't do it as well anymore. Strange. I hope it's not going to keep getting worse, but there's always other ways, other things we can do. Yeah. Have you met, have y'all met people at conferences or out and about or in any other situation that know about the podcast? I haven't been to a conference like since pre-COVID, so since before we started doing this, and no, not really. But I don't really meet people, so and I don't mention it to anybody I work with. I like deliberately go out of my way to not say that I'm on a podcast. Yeah, I've 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 been at a couple conferences since we started where people knew about once they like learned that like it was me. They were like, "Oh, I listen to Library Punk," and I was like, "Oh God, like." <laughs> Fuck, like I, I talk about like my like fucking on on like, oh my god like I remember one time at my previous position in my annual review the committee of reviewers mentioned the podcast in their review even though I had not submitted it as part of my like annual review packet because I do not consider this to be like service or scholarship or anything like, I do not do this professionally. And yet, like my fellow faculty mentioned it. I mean, yeah. I was being, you know, I was being systematically pushed out of that position anyway. So it was a form of harassment, in my opinion. Uh, they're like, well, you shouldn't have told us about it then casually. I'm like, oh, so I can't just mention anything in casual conversation around you if I don't want it to show up in my annual review. Okay, cool. Thanks. Good to know. Yikes. Yeah, no, no, it was it was bad. Yeah, it's like boundary issues. Yeah, no, it was bad. But like, yeah, I've been at conferences and people are like, oh, yeah, I listen. Or like I was hanging out with uh, Leslie from Thanks for the Memories and one of their friends and their friend is a librarian. The the friend was like, wait a minute, are you Jay from Library Punk? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yes, I am. <laughs> you got recognized. Like, yeah, because I was like, and Leslie was like, oh, yeah, this is Jay, my friend. He's a librarian and he does a podcast. And they were like, are you? And I was like, yes, that's. That's me. Yeah, I'm on That's If me. Books Could Kill. I know. Yeah. Yeah. You should do yeah, that. You yeah. should pretend to be Michael Hobbs for people who don't know what Michael Hobbs looks like. <laughs> yeah. Make it a different podcast that you claim to be on each time. <laughs> Just feel like lore. Yeah. I mean, I've been on three. Yeah. I've been on three episodes of Horror Vanguard now. So, and then we've been on Radio Free Tote Bag. And then. I've been on Here Be Media once. I was on Data Transfer. I was very high on that episode. I think they're cool with chaos on their episodes. Yeah, I think you need to be a little higher drunk to be on Data Transfer. Well, I've been on um, our guest who's the husband of uh, Ursula. TK um, Fisher. Yeah. Yeah, TK Fisher. Yeah, I've been on his like productivity podcast. Productivity Alchemy with Kevin Sonny. Yeah, I've been on that one. I, I should reach out to him to get back on that one now that I'm in my new job. Yeah, we should revisit some of our early guests. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, part of that has been they're not on Twitter anymore. Yeah. Uh, so, like, how the fuck do we reach out to them? Is like, if I can't find them on Discord or, or Mastodon, some people I really don't have any way to contact. Let's get AJ Boston on again. He's fun. But no, I also haven't been to any conferences in person. I forgot about ACRL. I, I should have gone. Yeah. 
I mean, at the Music Library Association, I had someone tell me that like all of the like policy wonks love library book. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. That makes like, sense. All the Skull Common policy people love us. Because we, we cover that stuff like as it comes out. That like the times that we've had like Kyle Courtney on that people were like, oh, Kyle Courtney went on. And, like they were like jealous of Kyle because he got to come on. I was like, that's oh. funny. I was like, no, it's like, I mean, I'm friends with Kyle, but like, I was friends with Kyle since I was in grad school. But I did, I did run into someone in a, in a Zoom meeting who was a listener. Yeah. Like early on, but I don't remember what the context was at all. I just remember I was at my old place. So it was more than a year ago and I was fully remote, but I, I'm like remote a lot of the time anyway. So I, I have no clear delineation of when most people stopped being remote because uh, my team's still hybrid mm-hmm. and like it's summer right now. So I've just been remote. I'm like, there's no one on campus. There's no reason for me to go in. <laughs> That's all going to change this fall. Probably. Yeah. I honestly know more people who know about the homosaurus, but they don't know anybody who is on the editorial board for the homosaurus. So most of the time people know about the homosaurus, but don't know name recognition about me that I'm on it. Um, until I tell them like, Oh, I'm on the homosaurus and they go, Oh, Wow. But but more people know about the Homosaurus than know about this podcast usually. But they just like don't know anybody who's on the Homosaurus. Makes sense. Yeah, I don't usually like run through the names of people on projects. Uh, right. Immediately. Yeah. And because most of the time when I do, it's like, oh yeah, it's a whole group of people I have no idea about. Like it's a separate little world of Skullcon people that are just like have been doing this in a different way for like a decade, and they're they're a whole separate ring of of people. So like a lot of people involved with like FSCI or um, Force Eleven, I've just never run into them. I'm mean, gonna like keep going to that, but it's a, it's an interesting. It's like kind of run like a conference, but it's also run into courses. So there's like a keynote, but then you do a little course. And it was cool. I recommend it. If it, it was, I don't remember it being super expensive. But yeah, I I wanted to go to um, a conference this year, uh, but it ended up they hadn't decided if they were going to be in person or not, and that was going to be my in person conference that I was going to like fly out to and get to travel. And uh, I was looking forward to it. And they're like, "We've gone. We're doing a virtual this year." And I'm like, Ugh. Uh, "Even though I had money budgeted for it, I'm like, oh well, there's always next year. We're in the uh, can't spend a dime part of the year." So everything is on hold. We can't even buy books right now, even if a faculty member wants it. Uh, the more I learn about how the budget works for our university, the more I'm like, this is probably not like legal the way the universities are all run. <laughs> like all this stuff is supposed to be done in advance, like theoretically, like all this, like your courses are all supposed to be planned early and all of your your budget's supposed to be done early. And like everyone does everything at the last minute because the Board of Regents does everything at the last minute. So no one can plan anything until the Board of Regents votes on the budget. They vote for the budget a week before the budget year begins. And that's why I can't hire anyone right now. Jesus Christ. Even though they could technically start on September 1st, we can't start hiring them until the budget is confirmed. And I'm like, that can't be in the law. The law is always like, you got to do this six months early. If you are one of the people who were jealous of Kyle Courtney, you can contact us more by email. We don't get a whole lot of emails (laughs) because honestly, Twitter is not great, but Blue Sky is also there. It's just library punk. And there's just no DMs on Blue Sky. So you got to shoot your shot in public and just... Yeah, you just gotta send yeah, it. Yeah, just well, the email is also on our in our Blue Sky yeah. account, but it's librarypunkpod at gmail. And so, if you want to come on, we're totally cool with that. Do we have an Instagram? No, I don't like posting on Instagram. Yeah, you can do it Instagram if you want to. It's meta. I know Tinder <laughs> Subject has one, but Kate does everything for the. T- Kate does all of Tinder Subject social media. Sometimes I'll like retweet a shit post or read something, but like Kate does all of our socials on Insta and Blue Sky and Twitter. X. I don't really know how Instagram works. I just, I literally only, I started following people and I unfollowed people and I was like, no, I want this to be the bunnies and comics app. So I just mostly follow bunnies and web comic artists. And like, yeah, I four or five friends. I rarely make any posts on Instagram. And sometimes I'll make like little stories and it's me just like making stories out of stuff from like the leather archives, like horny posts. And that's like what so much of my Instagram is. (laughs) Yeah. And it's good. And honestly, I've kind of used it for DMs more since people aren't on Twitter as much. So if I need to DM yeah. someone who's not on Discord, that's how I'll do it. Should we have a Discord? I'm getting over my hatred of Discord this past few months. Should, should we? I mean, because we don't have a Patreon, but like, yeah, we should. Should we have a Discord? If people can come hang out in the Library Punk Discord? I don't know. 
I feel like I'm at my Discord limit. Yeah, I'm in the HV Discord. I'm in the RFTB Discord. I'm in the left page, your media Discord. I'm in Kyle's Discord. I support John on Patreon, like, as well as HV. So I'm in John's Discord. I'm not active in any of these, but I'm in there. I just like join them and then I don't do anything. I'm in the Western Kabuki Discord. I'm in that Skullcom one, but I don't look at it. I'm in the Girl Scouts jello discord there's like a librarian one that i'm in that i think is like invite only or something yeah i remember that one yeah i, I left all the ones i wasn't active in um yeah so i'm only active in three so many. and i just left all the others and there's only one that i've left that i'm not active in because it's related to work so i'm in so many and i just never leave them i just turn off notifications i mute all the ones yeah i was doing that for a while but then i was just like there's no point in being in these things to consider right in <laughs> would you go in a discord yeah if you want us to make a discord so that you can talk in it and we'll lurk and you can dm us send, okay. send a carrier pigeon yeah that could be that could be that could be fun you could post memes our discord could, be. could just be for memes i don't know and, like sharing bad news you wouldn't want to get parasocial yeah. <laughs> honey i've gotten kind of parasocial like this, this folks it's fine <laughs> All right. Final thoughts. This has been like, I, I remember we started this because you wanted to make sure that you were socializing during quarantine. I needed enrichment in my enclosure. Yeah. And yeah. so we did this and got enrichment. I remember feeling really cool. I remember telling my ex, um, like, oh my God, one of my friends wants to like do a podcast and like invited me to be a guest on it. Like, like to be like a host on it. I'm going to be on like a podcast. And then like feeling really cool that I got to do this. And like, yeah, this is something I look forward to. I don't know. I've met really cool people. I learned really cool things. I get to like work out what I think doing this. I get to make a fool out of myself on the internet. People know more about my perversions than they probably should. Uh, but whatever. Embrace uh, cringe. <laughs> I, I am cringe, but I am free, mm -hmm. you know? But yeah. This has like been like, I don't know, this, this gives me enrichment in my enclosure. It's good enrichment. And I get to make cool friends. Podcast is about making friends and communism. That's, you know, the horror vanguard's been saying it since day one, that podcasting is about friendship and communism, basically. John always says it, making friends. Yeah. Um, something about communism. I yeah. had one too that I was doing in the like the, again in the first like twenty episodes. I got into a habit of saying something, and then I just stopped. And there's so many things that I started and just dropped of after like ten or fifteen episodes, and I can't even remember what these bits were. And I'm like, I had good bits, but I just don't remember them anymore because I don't keep them in a notes document uh, where it's like. Oh yeah, because I, I keep deleting my notes is the reason. I do have a notes document in my Obsidian, but I keep cutting stuff out of it. So like once ChatGPT got released, I'm like, well, there goes the chat, the AI bit because now anyone can do it. It's not cool to do. They're just eras. Just think of them as, as yeah seasons. Era. We're in our John D. Fucksmith era. Yeah, we really are. We really have expanded the lore of John D. Fucksmith. If anyone wants to write fan fiction. About about uh, us becoming John D. Fucksmith and then going back in time and starting uh, doing the podcast and going back in time and becoming I'm manifesting right now. <laughs> I would not get mad if people wrote any kind of library punk fan fiction. That would be hilarious. I I am so oh god news the so the the gay poet Richard Sykin who all the girlies um use stuff from his poems for AO3 fan fiction titles so he had like a stroke like a couple of years ago and has been in like recovery from it but like now he's just like come out on Twitter as like writing fan fiction and calling it transgressive and like saying he writes like John Luck and Winzest and Destiel and he's like I don't need to write Hannah Graham because Hannibal is already perfect and I'm like what is happening? Yeah. And I've just been kind of like losing my fucking mind like think, all week. I think the tweet I saw <laughs> because Richard's was, like it. What was it? The second tower has hit Western Yowie. <laughs> when he was like, somebody explain Steve Bucky to me, and I was like, it's all over. <laughs> the world is ending. We can wrap it up and go home. Yeah. I found an image the other day that was like the first known uh, impreg fetish fan art and it was of captain kirk incredible that's the cover art 
<laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know where my copy of Crush is right now, which is Richard Sykin's like first book of poetry. But you know, any any time you've seen like you're in the car with a beautiful boy and you're trying not to tell him that you love him, like that's from him. Or if you love me, you love me in a way I don't understand. Like you know, all, all these like gay poetry and stuff always gets used in AO3 fanfiction titles. That's Richard Sykin. Uh, apparently, he he's a he's a slash fiction guy, and God bless him. I love it. Um, <laughs> I'm so excited about it. I had to learn some AO3 tags the other day just because someone was using them in like real life as like discourse terms, and I was like, "What does this mean?" Someone had just breached containment and had tried to talk about real world world issues using AO3 tags as their vocabulary. And I was like, this is incomprehensible. <laughs> Find your state of manner, friends. Oh, it was the person telling Neil Gaiman that there shouldn't be a sad ending in stories. Oh, God. And they used some AO3 term that I had to look up, and I still don't really understand. Hurt no comfort. Hurt no comfort, yeah. And I just was reading through AO3, and I was like trying to pick it up with context clues, and I was like, I don't know what this means. Everything oh has 90 million tags on it. There's no context. Good Omens, sponsor of the show. I have not watched season two yet. Most people don't know that it's out. I, I probably won't be watching season two. There's a lot of good Bible stuff. I don't know. Yeah, because I love the book, and the book's great. Um, season one has its moments. I love David Tennant. I love Michael Sheen. I saw some, yeah. I saw some clips of uh, a, a scene with Job, and I'm like, okay, I kind of I kind of got to see that. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Do it for the job. It's a good job if you can get it. <laughs> All right. This has been so cool doing this for like. He's, he's making it sound like the last episode. <laughs> the end. We're we just never post again. Well, we've been doing this for like two and a half years now. Yeah. We started in like a God. end of January. But yeah, I keep I keep thinking like, are we on year two? Or we're no, we're past year two. Yeah, we're past Technically, year two. Technically, yeah. It's two and a half we're years. Two years old. Almost, oh, yeah. My life is so different than when we first started. So many things have happened to me <laughs> since we started this podcast. Just how it goes. Um, everything happens so much. Everything happens so much. My my life has just been so up in the air. Things keep happening. This has been the stable thing in my life <laughs> since it started. It's true. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, everything has gone up in the air a million times, except for this podcast. Have fun editing this. <laughs> yeah, it's a little long, but it's only three of us, so it won't be bad. Yeah. Good. Good night.